Hello out there, my name is Milesy and welcome to my channel. Today, let's actually take a look at the floss I've been getting in the Hope Broidery box. Um, I'm just going to use some scrap 14 count and throw it in one of the hoops that comes with it because why not? We might as well see what the hoops are like to work with as well. Now, I don't know much about this floss. This is not uh, the kind of typical floss that you will get a lot of times on the internet. Most floss that you tend to get, um, especially the custom dyed stuff, started out its life as DMC. Um, that seems to be pretty common just because DMC is very easy to get in bulk. And it's usually pretty obvious right out of the bat whether or not that's what the floss is because DMC floss does tend to have a particular feel to it. Um, but this did not. Uh, this is from Sublime, uh, Sublime Floss is the name of the company. And it's made in China, but it is 100% mercerized cotton, 8.75 yards. So it's pretty standard. Um, wash cold, tumble, tumble dry, no bleach. Um, and it's definitely not hand dyed. This is its complete own unique floss. And I know that uh, when it comes with these packages here, I'm pretty sure this was always meant to be used with all six strands. And I'm pretty sure of that. I've already put the first batch I got on a bobbin, but I just wanna show you this. So let's go ahead and bring it over here to the camera where you can see it a little bit better. And you'll notice that this is not variegated floss. It is simply three strands of white twisted around three strands of pink. So you're absolutely, at least with these skeins, meant to use the whole thing at once. And it is the weirdest floss I have ever seen. I kind of like it. Um, it's kind of its own unique blend, but it's definitely not your standard floss. It is really bizarre. And the fact that the floss or these kits do come with that enormous needle and the projects are always using all six strands does kind of tend to lend me to believe that that's how we're meant to use this. But if you want to just buy the box for the contents and you don't necessarily want to do the surface embroidery, you're just looking to put some weird floss into your stash or maybe you've picked up some, uh, what is it called? Sublime floss, sublime stitching. I think it's got both of those on the label. But if you're looking to just pick some of this up elsewhere, uh, let's take a look and see how it works if we use it like ordinary six strand embroidery floss. Okay, so one question I do get pretty often is what do I do with this blue stuff that's all over my hoop? How do I get the blue stuff off? Um, you can kind of peel it off and a lot of time, yeah, there we go, that one came off pretty decently. This one's always a little bit trickier though, so let's go ahead and see. How well do you come off? Eh, got that one. Nope, oh, nope, nope. Oh, there we go. So there's a little bit of the blue. Uh, I don't think the camera wants to focus, but for the most part, there we go. That has come off. I never leave the blue on there just because, let's be real, it's kind of gross, but you can wiggle it out. I think that's as good as that's getting, so. What do you do with the blue that comes on your hoop? Take it off, because I think it's just meant to, uh, protect the hoop from getting scratched up in transit. That's all. Okay, so now we've got our fabric in the hoop. These hoops are very similar to ones I'd bought previously. They are very sturdy. Um, they don't feel like they're going to splinter apart. A lot of hoops, especially the ones that I get at like Michael's, are really weirdly cheap, but these ones feel like they've been uh, pressed and glued together really well. I've used these for framing in the past. I don't normally like to work on wooden hoops though, just because I don't like the way they don't hold tension. But I guess for really small projects, especially projects that are meant to be worked and framed in the same hoop, uh, these ones will do, uh, will do it for you. They're only four inches. So any project that you do in a little four inch hoop will pretty much um, 
go go by in like a day. Uh, this is about the size I did most of those Pokemon on, or a few of them, most of the Mario ones. Anyway, so yeah, it does kind of hold on to it. I just, I don't know, I don't like them personally. That's just a preference thing, but these are really good hoops. Uh, the screw is nice and sturdy. I don't feel like anything's going to pop off or break because I've screwed it tight enough to hold my tension. So that's a good start. Now the floss. One thing I notice right away about the floss is the way that it feels. It's not very soft. There is a very particular roughness to it, but it's not very rough either. It's it's a weird texture. I'm not even really sure how to describe it. It's uh it's tough. I think that's a good way way to put it. It it doesn't really want to bend and move around very much, I don't think. So let's find the end. Did I really grab a skein of floss that doesn't have an exposed end anywhere? Wow. What? Seriously? There we go. So I'm not gonna use too much because I do kind of want to uh, keep these around. Couldn't find any of my other scissors so I grabbed my big fabric ones. <laughs> So, let's go ahead here. I'm, I want to more test what it's like to use stranded. I think that's the ultimate test. So let's pull one out. It does come apart very easily. It doesn't catch on itself. Uh, some of the polyester floss that I got from Amazon earlier in the year did tend to catch on itself. Um, the individual strands, ooh. Okay, so the individual, I think this is where it gets its weird, not quite smooth, not quite coarse feel from. Because the individual strands feel like very, very, very fine pearl cotton, if that makes sense. It's very odd. I'm not sure how I feel about that. So let's go ahead and thread up our needle. Find a better way to hold these dinosaurs in place in the future. Okay, how yeah, well, okay. I can get that threaded without having to lick it and without having to use the uh, needle threader, but maybe that was just a fluke. And let's see, how do you behave? Get you through here. I think you can hear the coarseness of it. Listen, I'm gonna put it up on my microphone. That is very coarse, very, very coarse. But let's just do some quick stitching with it, see how it, ha uh, how it handles the starched Ada that I'm using. That is part of the reason for the noise, but that is still a very loud noise. Okay. And I'm not doing any kind of railroading, any kind of laying. I'm just letting the floss fall where it wants. Because if I help it out, I feel like that's a little bit cheating when I'm testing it. So I'm just going super quick. But it doesn't feel like it's falling apart. The, ed the ends have even held up so far pretty decently. I mean not doing a whole lot of stitching with it. But at this point, even with the polyester stuff I was getting off of Amazon, I was already starting to notice a bunch of fluff and the edges or the ends were kind of starting to fall apart. But so far, I think the weird texture aside, this is pretty decent. Um, it does come in a lot of really cool colors. I still don't know what I'm going to do with this. Um, it, it's definitely a blend. It's definitely meant to 
kind of do some kind of automatic blend. So I'll just hold those around for that. But I think, yeah, if you can get your hands on this kind of floss separately, or if you get the, uh, the Hope box and you decide to just go your own way with it, it's pretty decent floss. I'm going to put uh, all of what I've got on two bobbins and put it in the uh, box with the rest of my stuff and probably just use it for small little projects that don't really need to be any specific color or use it if I want a slightly different texture because the weird texture of the floss does. I don't know how well that's going to come across. Let me fix my webcam because it does kind of give the stitches themselves a weird kind of texture. And let's show you that. Get that real up close. I don't know how well you can see that, but that is kind of an odd texture that it gives the uh, stitches. There we go. And yeah, up close like this, you can see what I mean. It's more like pearl cotton than embroidery floss. It's really weird. So I feel like if you put this next to some DMC in the same project, it would definitely give you a different texture. So I think that's what I'm going to hold on to this for. Um, and just use it as like very subtle embellishments if I want something to have more of a matte effect than the slightly more glossy look that DMC tends to have. But yeah, I'm surprisingly pleased with this because I know it's not meant to be used by uh, like this just from the way that it comes and the way that it's used with uh, the Hope Box patterns. But I kind of like it. I'm probably going to use it for other things. So if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a like and a share because that does help me out. And thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.